everyone. Welcome. Let's do a sound check before we get started. In the meantime, I'll start reading out people's names to say hello to everyone. Um, please give me the thumbs up if you can see me and hear me all right. I am, of course, Lisa Mitrokin, and that's my lovely assistant, Shelby. Uh, we have a poll in, in the live chat. There's a poll. Uh, it appears in blue. And I'm asking a question. I'm asking you guys to play a game. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, everyone. Um, to guess how many colored pencils I will use today to create this beautiful rose effect. Not counting white, just the colors. And your options are 6, 8, 11, and 12. I know we had that poll going for a couple of weeks already, but YouTube killed it. So we had to start it all over. Apparently, you can't run a poll for more than a day. So Ellie is here. Welcome. Lily Rose, Cheryl, Iselina, Marilyn, Tara, Art of the Soul Multiverses. Welcome. Stacy, uh, Sharon, Mark, Ego Brain. Uh, who else is with us today? There were more people. Uh, Cassandra, hello. Thank you for joining us from Australia. Uh, la 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 missing a whole bunch of people oh my god the chat goes on and on how early do you guys get here um uh, little patty welcome mark okay i'm just gonna say hello to you guys as you roll in because i'm reading the same names over and over again but i see that there are almost 30 people in here already uh cheryl hello so yes thumbs up everyone can see and hear me all right that sounds fantastic i'm gonna switch my screen and um, let's see if my audio continues to work there as well. Can you guys still hear me? I had, a, I had an issue with it on, on the last stream where I totally killed my audio as soon as I switched to this one. Uh, yes, still the thumbs up. Okay. Thank you guys. Oh, it was mostly me talking too much. says Stacy. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Della, hello, Bridget, hello. All right, let's do some rose coloring. Uh, again, this is the, the page that I will be working on today. This is my rose coloring page. Uh, Bridget, hello. And that page is available in the private community in Tom. So if you guys wanna color along with me, please um, go to Tom, get this page. And if you don't wanna do it during the live stream, you can play the live stream back and then color along with me. This will be a full two hour coloring with every single color announced as requested. So I'm going to keep the poll going for just the first 30 to 40 minutes because after that, it's going to be pretty obvious how many colors I'm using. <laughs> so please don't forget to vote. And Marie, welcome uh, from Canada. Nice to see you. Someone else joined us. Alessandra from Italy. Nice to see you guys. Uh, let's, uh, let's start the video and start with white charcoal on tan toned paper. This is a tea rose. We had, um, uh, pink is not a color. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're going to use colored pencils. I didn't say how many colors I will use, how many colored pencils. Um, but, uh, yeah, I might've said colors for the, for the shortness of the message because because there's only so many words you can put in uh, in the poll description. But yes, technically, Mark Mark is a bit of a snob these days because he's taking my color theory course. So he knows um, a lot of terms. Latrice, welcome. Uh, <laughs> how many colored pencils will I use to complete this rose effect? Uh, take the poll. It's, uh, it's in the live chat. Uh, if you guys are not in the live chat, please join us. If you're watching this stream, you have to subscribe to the channel to be able to join. Once you subscribe, there's like a five minute waiting period. And after that, you'll be able to chat with people and, um, you know, participate in the poll and other fun things. The chat is where it's all happening. Hello, Tracy. Thank you for the thumbs up, you guys. There are more thumbs up than people actually watching. I don't know how you pulled that off. Uh, to me, the screen is a little blurry. That has to be on your end because this is a 4K recording. That's, um, I guarantee you, is an awesome quality. Um, if your screen is blurry, that's the resolution that YouTube set you to. You can change that. 
uh, on your YouTube screen, if you hover over the picture, there is a settings button that looks like a gear. If you click on it, there is an option for quality. It probably set you to auto, which is probably 360. And that's why your resolution looks crappy. Um, click on 720 or 1080p. That way your picture will be the highest possible quality. Uh, yeah, I'm, this is a pre-recorded coloring, you guys. So I guarantee you that it's in the highest resolution possible. I'm looking at it right now on my screen. So if you are seeing anything blurry ever on my channel, that's YouTube and you can actually control that. That's with the gear settings for, um, oh, great. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Lily Rose. Always, always, always. I would never release a video that's blurry. Um, so if that's happening on any of my content at all, um, check that gear setting first for the, uh, for the video quality. Uh, all right. Uh, so I am working on Tantone paper. Mona, hello. And you guys requested that we do a tea rose in my community. We had a poll and you voted and you voted by far the most people voted on a tea rose. What is a tea rose? A lot of you asked and um, I was uh, I, I didn't give you a lot of information in the in the post, but we can talk about tea roses now. A tea rose isn't technically tea isn't a color. Several people asked what color is tea. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you for the super chat. It's a super sticker. Oh, I love super stickers. It's so cool. Thank you. I don't know if the if the sticker itself shows up on the on the screen, but it does show up in the live chat. It's adorable. It says my hero and it's like a little puppy dog or a little fox or something. It's really cute. I love it. Um, my favorite rose says Sharon, a tea rose. Uh, mine as well. Mine as well. I was really glad that you guys chose tea rose. So tea isn't actually a color. Uh, tea rose is a term for a rose that looks um, like a combination of peach colors, yellow, a little bit of pink. Uh, they come in different variations. And my favorites are the ones that um, uh, that look like they have pink splatter and a little bit of yellow splatter on them as well. So the one that we're doing today um, is very heavy on pink and yellow. This is what the final result will look like. And we're using, we're going to be using um, Black Widow pencils today from different boxes. But of course you can achieve this effect with any brand of pencils if you try to, to match my colors more or less. And I will be calling out my colors. They will be appearing on the screen with their names and their numbers and their titles as I use them. Um, so you guys can take notes on that. And if you want to color with my exact colors, go for it. I know that a lot of you have Black Widow pencils. So we have some announcements today. The biggest one being my color theory course. First of all, thank you so much for all of my live color theory students who are not, not my students who are alive, but my color theory course that's live. <laughs> Uh, there are two versions of the course. There's an ongoing life course, which has just become become closed. You can't enter that anymore um, because we, we've passed the point where people can catch up with us. So we're not letting any new students in. Um, but the course continues for my current enrolled students. We still have two weeks to go and you guys are doing an amazing job. I am so proud of my students. Hello, Bulma. My first live with you. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I, I hope you have a great time. We the live chat is the place to be. There are lots of really cool people here. But by popular demand uh, from people who live in different time zones and uh, were not able to join the live color theory course because of the time of the live lessons, I've created an on demand color theory course. So that's up in my community right now. There are going to be links popping up for that throughout the show. And Mark seems to be sharing it very generously with everyone. Oh, another super sticker. Thank you so much, Sharon. That one is adorable. Thank you. Oh, uh, me being a male, how many different rose colors are there? What an excellent question mark. I'm going to put Sharon's super chat up again. Uh, Shelby took off. Did she really? Oh. <laughs> She's still in the room, but uh, but you guys can't see her anymore. Hopefully she'll come back to the beanbag. So me being a male, very funny. 
how many different rose colors are there i think oh my god there's so many there there's a crazy number of different roses um there are red roses of course classic white uh in the red roses there are really deep burgundy reds uh, that look almost black i believe there are actual black roses so they're so deep burgundy that they appear almost black they're they're definitely uh, bred to look that way they're not naturally occurring roses they're different kinds of pink roses there's an entire range of different pinks um oh <laughs> tea roses of course i believe there are orange roses yeah of course i had orange roses in my garden um there are orange roses bright orange uh fire and ice orange roses that's right oh black roses nice i believe i don't know what do you guys y you tell me is the blue rose real i've never seen one in real life i used to be obsessed with the blue rose when i was a kid and a teenager i used to draw them all the time i thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world uh bridget says i have five different rose bushes trees and they all have different colors that's awesome Mona says yellow roses oh that's right actual yellow roses not not just orange ones yellow roses are quite gorgeous um black ones I was told at my job uh once they spray them black oh okay <laughs> pink of course I have never seen one in real life yeah the blue one right um any flu any flower that's blue i'm all over it yeah so i've seen these amazing photos of blue roses and i used to draw them like compulsively i thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world um but i've never actually seen one in real life so um if you guys can tell me if, if somebody can look it up if a blue rose is a real thing or not i've done experiments in school with flowers where oh purple roses smell amazing okay they all smell amazing they're roses uh when i was in school in high school i did some experiments with uh for my science class with different colors of flowers and i remember i did this kind of like a, a science magic presentation with daisies and their colors and i put daisies in different vases with different food coloring in the water um, and within hours the daisies changed color the petals actually became the color of the food coloring in the water so I made blue daisies and purple daisies and orange daisies and all that kind of stuff. So I believe you can do that with any kind of flower. If you actually feed it um, colored water, um, they will they will become that color, even though they're not um, genetically engineered to be that color um, as as they bloom in regular water. I am named after a yellow rose. The spelling anyway, my full name is Eleanor. Is Eleanor? Eleanor means r yellow rose. I had no idea. That's really cool to know. I am named after a rose bush, uh, the Rose of Sharon bush. How very cool. Uh, they used to let me put dozen roses together at work once. That's so cool. We had, when Tech and I lived in Chile, we had a garden and we had three types of rose bushes. We had red, orange, and white. I love white roses, um, but I also love tea roses quite a bit. I didn't have tea roses, but tea roses are my favorites. So a little bit about what's happening on the screen. We're, we're getting uh, <laughs> really into this whole rose, uh, rose thing, which is awesome. Lots of you are here in the stream today because you love flowers and especially roses. But notice what I'm doing with my white charcoal. Uh, I am priming this rose because I'm working on tan toned paper, but I'm not priming it the same way that I usually prime skin tones um, or other things that I tend to color, like, like fur or whatever, uh, or metals. Um, I am actually giving the rose a little bit of texture already. So I'm adding a lot of this white starting with the edge of the petal and kind of trailing trailing off um, with these whooshy movements so that you get a little bit of that line work on the um, on the petals uh eleanor de groot rose oh okay i didn't see the full name in the previous message i thought eleanor meant rose okay and uh, can this be done on white paper? Absolutely. You can color this effect on white paper if that's all you have. And uh, you're going to print um, that. If I'm flickering, that's YouTube. Try to try to refresh. 
um because on my end everything is clear um so yes it can be done on white paper if all you have to work with is white paper um go ahead and print it on white just skip this step um, because you won't need the white charcoal you already have the white of the paper why tan and not gray most excellent question because i am creating ultimately um, a character that is very much in warm colors so uh, my ultimate look is going to be this there's a lot of peachy colors there's a lot of pink there's a lot of yellow. If I did this on gray, which ironically on, on camera, the paper looks a little bit gray, but it's just because the light is so harsh and cold. Um, but the, you can see on the recording uh, that the paper is tan. Um, because I knew that the final outcome will be really, really delicate colors, very peachy colors, uh, I went with tan because tan is on the warmer side. It's already a nice soft kind of like a tea color itself so it provides a really nice undertone can this be done on gray absolutely it can but you'll be competing against that gray and the gray will add to the coolness of your image which may be the look that you're going for if you're going to add a lot of purplish and grayish and bluish shadows to this rose then go with gray uh, but mine is going to be very warm very homey uh, very bright kind of a rose so I went with tan if you guys have tan paper I highly recommend that you work with that over white uh, for this effect um, if you have pink paper that will be even better uh, where can I find the picture in Talm most excellent question in Talm there is a whole Oh, Shelby left us all together. Uh, in Tom, there's a whole uh, menu on the side, or if you are in um, on the phone, then it's a drop-down hamburger menu. And it has uh, things like events, topics, um, and, and other options. Under topics, you have a whole bunch of different albums. One of them is called Gift Pages from Lisa. And that's a good album for you guys to save a pin or, or something so that you can always come back to it because that has dozens upon dozens of free gift pages. And every time that I offer a page for free in my community, it's there. It's gift pages from Lisa. Lisa, question. Why do you use white charcoal sticks instead of white charcoal pencils? Is there a difference? Another excellent question. You guys are on a roll today with, with very, very good uh, topics to discuss. Uh, I tend to work with the sticks instead of the pencils, even though I have both. For me, the sticks feel a little bit better on paper. Um, I, I just, it, it comes down to texture and feeling. I feel like the pencils are a little bit, I mean, the material is the same, don't get me wrong. It's the same exact thing. You can absolutely work with pencils, um, but the pencils are sharpened the same way as your regular pencils are. And I feel like you have to work a lot longer with a pencil to achieve the same effect. Where, whereas with the sticks, it's kind of rounded. I don't ever sharpen it to a needle point. Um, so I can cover a lot of the area faster. And it's also the application is a little bit smoother. It's more like working with chalk or a pastel um, as opposed to a pencil. And since I'm going for that little diffused look on the, on the primer, for me, that's just um, uh, a nicer way to go. Plus, I like the feel of the stick in my hand. It's just a personal preference. Uh, a lot of you actually prefer the pencils. And for this effect, the pencil will work because we're doing the little lines. Um, it's just that in my experience, it takes a little bit longer to achieve the same effect with the pencils. On this picture, doesn't the Q-tip take away the strategy texture that you just put in? It does to a certain to a certain degree, but not completely. Um, and I put the Q-tip effect in there um, on purpose uh, because I do want it to be a little bit a little bit blurred because we're going to put in so much more detail without colored pencils. But as you can see on the screen right now, there is still a lot of that texture. But I want it to be as soft and silky as possible because it's a rose. It doesn't actually have really harsh lines on its petals. It's it's smooth and silky. So definitely go for the Q-tip on this one. And an extra bonus that you get with 
the Q-tip is that you kind of erase a lot of the outlines. You can still see enough of the picture, but it's, it's diffused. The outlines are not as harsh as they were before. And to help you guys also deal with those outlines, because roses, roses are so delicate. The outlines kind of kill the realistic effect. Uh, in my community, a few days ago, I shared with you an older video of mine from a year ago where I color white roses. And in that video, I specifically teach multiple ways to eliminate outlines altogether so that your rose looks even more realistic, even softer. Um, here, I didn't intentionally destroy all the outlines, but the white charcoal helped eliminate them a little bit. And the other thing that I added, uh, that I did here on this page to help you guys with the outlines so that they're not really stark and black, um, is that I'm offering this page in lilac rather than in black. So e whether you print it in color in, in actual lilac or in black and white, in which case it will print in gray, you will have lighter outlines than just black and, and that will help with the effect as well. So let's see, what color am I using here? I'll pull, okay, I'm on the first color. We should end the poll at this point because um, after the first color, people will probably start uh, doing calculations, but we have some sixes. We have some eight is in the lead. Uh, when we ran the poll two weeks ago, six was in the lead by a lot. Again, if you haven't taken the poll yet, um, I'm gonna run it for 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna end the poll. Uh, please, if even if you already voted previously, uh, I had to refresh the poll and start it anew because um, YouTube apparently doesn't allow you to run a poll for more than a day. So we have a brand new poll. Please, uh, please put your vote in. I'm curious to see how many color pencils do you guys think I will use to achieve this effect? Hey, Donna. I'm sorry I'm late. No worries. No worries. Welcome to the show. We're only on our first color. And this is, I actually have notes today. Uh, <laughs> this is Black Widow 57 from the original Black Widow spider set, and it's called Watermelon. This is our first color, and it's pink. So how am I applying this color? I'm applying it starting from the inside of the flower. So with the white charcoal, I started from the outside of the petals, kind of trailing it in and then diffusing it as much as possible with my Q-tip. And now as I'm adding my first color, which is bright pink, I am connecting the uncolored areas of the flower with the white charcoal and I'm doing it with this beautiful bright pink pencil. You do not, you absolutely do not need to have all Black Widow sets that exist to, to match my exact colors, to match my exact pencils, to create this effect. You don't even need to have Black Widows for this effect. This is very generic. So any, any pencil set that has a pink in it will work. Um, the colors here are not super sophisticated, but I'm working with my favorite Black Widow sets and my favorite Black Widow colors. Um, but in the other sets, um, anything that's a really bright pink. I know that the Prismacolor set has a lot of beautiful pinks, not reds though. For this one, I wouldn't go with red at all um, at this point. We, we may add some red later, but for now, it's just pink. Uh, oh, hell, <laughs> Iselina. <laughs> what, a, what a great emoji. So I keep shifting my weight. For those of you who, who don't know, my arm is broken. For those of you who know, my, my arm is still in a cast and the cast is getting more and more elaborate as I'm completely, as I'm getting completely sick of it. Um, actually, right after the show, I'm going, um, uh, Mama Tech is going to take me to get another x-ray so that I can find out when I can take this damn thing off because I'm really, really tired of it. And thank you guys, by the way, for cheering me up in the community. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl is always uh, reaching out to me, um, asking me if I'm all right, if I'm coping well with my arm, because I was losing my mind a couple of days ago. I'm like, I want to go writing. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> but the cast looks epic. It does look pretty cool. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it. Unfortunately, I can't paint the this side of it because my arm doesn't doesn't quite twist that way yet. Uh, so if, when, I, when I show it this way, it looks quite blank. I have to, I have to twist it around to show it to you guys, but it does look really cool when I just have my arm dangling down. Uh, uh, you said you can do this without widows. Uh, 
Oh, that was your emoji. Oh, okay. Yes, you can you can do this without widows, but Iselina knows that uh, that I'm a huge uh, Black Widow fan, so I would probably never do this without widows. <laughs> Hang in there, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually I'm not. Oh, thank you. I'm not in pain at all anymore, and and like the movement in my hand is completely back to normal. I can actually make a fist, and I can pick things up. Um, and I can drop things. <laughs> I can scratch my head. Um, I can't lift anything heavy yet, and I can't turn my forearm the way that I used to turn it, hence not being able to paint the underside of my cast. Uh, when it's taken off, you need to put it into a frame. I am going to keep it. I This is actually my second cast. My first cast came off a few weeks ago, and it was also painted, so the, the doctor just let me hang on to it. It's it's up on my shelf. Um, so this one will go in the collection as well, but I have no idea why I'm keeping them. No, <laughs> Iselina is working on her hair. It's so cool. All right, how are we doing on that poll? We had 44 people vote already. Oh my God, okay. That's like all of you in the chat right now. That sounds like uh, like everyone already voted. Uh, so I am going to figure out how to end the poll. Uh, so far, eight is in the win. We have 45% uh, of people voted for eight, 34 for six, 11 for 12, and nine for 11. Uh, so I'm gonna end the poll. And that's our official vote. <laughs> Patience, grasshopper. <laughs> Artists are not known for being patient. Not at all. Okay, so that's our poll. I think you guys should be able to see the results of the poll in your in your live chat right now. I wonder if I can put it up on the screen. I cannot. Uh, does the time on the clock face represent the time you broke your arm? It does. You are now the second person who noticed that. Uh, most people did not. Uh, if they did, they didn't say anything. Uh, but yes, in fact, the the time on the clock is more or less the time that the that the accident happened. Good eye. All right, so this pink is coming out rather nicely, and in fact, notice at the notice at the style of shading um, that I'm using here, going from the inside of the flower out with this soft gradient transition into my white, and notice how well the background color is playing into it. Somebody asked earlier um, why tan paper because it gives it that nice tea rose undertone already. If you have paper that looks even more like tea rose, that would be great. Um, if you have, uh, you know, there's some really beautiful journal, like homemade paper style uh, pages that you can get in, in like really expensive paper stores. <laughs> uh, Japanese rice paper, you know, actually tea stained paper. That would be fantastic uh, for this tea rose effect. If you already have um, the background color that uh, that will help you with that undertone, go for it. Um, beige paper, uh, yellow, yellow paper would work. Yes, yellow paper would work unless it's really bright yellow. That would be a bit of an overkill. You definitely don't want your paper to be bright. Um, you want it to be a nice soft pastel color. Oh, it was you who asked me the same question in the, <laughs> in the YouTube comment. Yes, I did reply to it. In that case, you're the only person who noticed the time on my cast. <laughs> Ah, thank you, Mark. Mark just posted in the live chat a link to my YouTube video on the white rose effect. Um, don't uh, don't leave the stream to watch it. Um, it's a short video, though. I think it's only 15 minutes. Uh, definitely don't leave the stream to watch it, but you can open it in another window and save it for later. If you if you click on that link, it will take you there automatically. Um, it's a it's a really cool effect. It's an older video. It's not you know I don't make videos in that format anymore. I watched it myself and I was like, oh my god, I could do so much better now. Um, in terms of video production, but in terms of the effect, I would still make it exactly the same way today. I'm very very happy with that video. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I started on gray. Um, but change that and save it for blue or purple rose. Yeah, that that would work. That would work. Um, it's it's absolutely. Um, oh, nice. Thank you. I think it's totally pitching work of art. I love it. 
a great compliment it's a super video i learned a lot thank you guys it's it's for sure one of my favorites doing this on gray i'm usually oh thank you uh actually i i mean i have tattoos on my entire sleeve um my entire arm underneath the the cast is all my tattoos which is why i can't um I can't deal with with not having ink on my skin so I had to I had to paint it um, but the the tattoos on my arm I actually did myself as well so it's it's an old habit uh, what were we talking about the white rose the white rose um, definitely definitely check it out oh we were talking about oh color theory oh so many things popping up on the screen I can't keep up uh, the color theory link just popped up on the screen so if you guys are interested in that follow that link um, and later, later, when you have time to read about it and figure out what it's all about, um, join the color theory course. It is now on demand, meaning you can watch the lessons at your own pace and you don't have to wait for the for the live lesson. The video recordings are there for you to to follow through. And there's a lot of um, uh, the syllabus is very detailed. Everything is written out like a book so you can read it. You can look at the pictures and you can also watch the video and there's lots of homework, but you can't rush it. Every new lesson will appear to you seven days after you joined the channel um the the course you join the course lesson one is already waiting for you but you can't jump to lesson two until seven days have gone by and then seven days after that seven days after that that is intentional because um i need you guys to spend the time to actually do the homework even though the course is called color theory there is a lot of practice in it and without practice you won't really get the muscle memory for the things that i'm teaching you so please do um, oh, thank you, Nightbot. Nightbot says that broken bones are expensive. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed they are. I was, I was horrified by my medical bill that came in yesterday. Uh, hello, Christina. Welcome. We are on our first color. We did the priming with white charcoal and now we're coloring with watermelon and I'm working from um, the Black Widow set. Hello, Margie. I see that Margie is a new channel member because she has a little heart icon. Thank you so much for being my channel member. I see a lot of other people whose names are appearing in green and blue, meaning you guys are channel members as well. Ego Brain is a pizza slice. Mark is a pizza slice. Your icons change the longer time you spend as a YouTube channel member. Um, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, please do join the channel. It's really easy. There's a big button that says join underneath the video. Just hit that button and uh, pick a tier that you wish to belong to. It's a huge help to me. It helps me run the channel and give you more of this amazing free content. Um, it's a great way to support me in general. And I like to spoil my channel members. I give you guys a lot of free pages. So that's a, that's a great way to be part of the community if you can't afford to be a patron, for instance, or if you're already a patron and wish to do more to support my channel. Lisa, thank, thanks for the info on the difference on the charcoal. I'm making a junk journal and tea dyeing the paper's light tan. So thanks for the help. I would love to see that. Please post that in the community. That's so gorgeous. I love those effects. Um, drawing a tea rose on something like that, on, on actual tea dyed paper um, would be absolutely amazing. Um, I, Rose agreed life crystal course and wanted to do the metals now. Yeah, I, I also have uh, courses on Udemy that is going on. They're not actually live courses. They're pre-recorded and those are on demand courses. They they are my Udemy courses and you can just take them whenever there's no time limit on them. You can join some people joined like six months ago and they're still on their first lesson. Some people finish them in just a matter of weeks. Um, it, it's all entirely up to you. Uh, she does. I noticed my folder of Lisa's pages has 130 in it. Oh, wow. That's amazing. 130 pages. Fantastic. You guys are so cool. Oh my God. There are 44 people watching in the live stream. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the memberships. This is really helpful to me, especially now with all these horrible medical bills. Christina and Margie. Hello. And of course, Nightbot, thank you for giving us that link for the free community. If you are new to my channel, 
um actually that's that's not the right link nightbot you you totally messed up <laughs> that's the link to my shop <laughs> hey mark can you please post a link to my to my free private community tom we love you thank you ladybug um, my friend who has a whole collection of Black Widow uh, is asking me or asking if anyone has already made a whole full list of the colors in order written down or something like that. Um, I'm going to put that up on the screen. If anyone has that, please let Christina know um, and also post it in the community as well. If you if anyone has done that with Black Widows, done a full a full coloring of it. Um, Oh, it's okay. I needed the link to the shop anyway. I'm going to have to go uh, go back and fix it. I don't know why he thinks that that's the link to the community. Uh, can share after the lesson. Yes, yes, absolutely. After the lesson would be perfect. You certainly don't need to leave the live stream to, uh, to go post in the community. Um, there are five, six, seven Black Widow sets right now out. Uh, so it's quite it's quite a lot. I don't even know how many pencils total that is. All right, let's look back on the screen and see what's happening there. This is turning out to be quite beautifully already just in pink. And in fact, if you were coloring an actual pink rose, this would be the way to approach it. We're just not. Oh, thank you, Mark. That's that's the link. Mark is a much better admin than Nightbot. <laughs> thank you, Mark. That is the link to my free private community. If you're joining the stream for the first time or for a second or the third time, but you have not yet joined my private community, follow that link and join. That's where all the fun things happen. That's the best way to interact with me, to get the latest news. That's where I put up all of my free coloring pages. And uh, I actually set up these events there as well. So you guys don't have to rely on the YouTube notification bot. There are 180 pencils between all the Black Widow sets. That's a nice piece of trivia. I did not know that. Uh, that's actually a lot of th sets. I thought there were five sets, not seven. Correct. There are, um, I think there are seven. I think I'm correct. There are um, the original three sets, the spider, the scorpion, the cobra. Then we have the two skin tone sets and the monarch and the dragon so yeah that's that's seven sets uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel you guys if uh again if you are not subscribed you are missing out on a lot of really cool content and consider becoming a channel member that's a great way to get some insider information on stuff that's coming up and of course gift pages for uh for my members uh, and where can we enter? Yes, and and in the in the community, you can also that's where you can interact with each other. Yes, all the members of the community can interact with each other. Uh, you can you can join uh, other members by interest. You can even find members uh, who live near you. Oh, uh, Hulk smash the like button, coloring page for Tom. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that super chat. That's going in my piggy bank for, for the broken arm. <laughs> Thank you kindly. <laughs> yes, on Tom, of course, that's that's what we're talking about. And Tom, Tom, I am so proud of Tom. Tom, the community, is one of my greatest achievements in life. I am so honestly and sincerely proud of it and proud of you guys in particular because it's you who make the community amazing. I left Facebook almost a, more than a year ago to create Tom. I think we just celebrated a year in Tom. Um, I'm, I'm still technically on Facebook, but I don't actually do anything there. I don't, I don't share pages there. I don't, I don't talk to anyone there. Um, I just keep my profile so that people can find me. But I took my community off Facebook and into the private community called Tom, which is free for everyone. And we have almost 700 members and it's just such a positive place in a year that we've been running as a community there's constant interruption it's busy 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 but there's never a conflict can you imagine that an entire year without people 
ever clashing, even though we have so many different types of people. We have creepy gothic people. We have um, Joanna Basford fans who, who only specialize in coloring flowers and, and, and gardens. Um, loving how the Tom has grown. Yeah, me as well. And and just all sorts of different creators. We, we have people of different political views and different ages and everyone just exists in harmony and the craziest thing is that i have no rules in tom the only rule is be nice to each other like i don't monitor content i don't censor content we have no censorship on the type of art that's allowed to be posted like there are very few guidelines um you started tom before the great escape from chile correct yes and the great escape from chile happened earlier this year that's right um the great escape plan started around this time but um but uh oh someone who actually knows what tom stands for wow a lot of people don't know this tom actually stands for the art of lisa matrakin another another excellent piece of trivia that a lot of the viewers probably didn't know. I don't spell it out. It was the name of my Facebook group. It was actually spelled out and it was the art of Lisa McCrock. And, um, and when I took it off Facebook, I just kept it as Tom because people got used to it. Uh, I have talk, but just don't use it as much. Only have it for notifications to watch Lisa's videos. And that's perfectly fine. That's another cool thing about Tom is that you're not required to do or be anything. Like there's no participation required. It's your community. You use it any way that you want. Use it to your advantage. If it's, uh, if it's, if you want to use it to meet other people, we've had a lot of clicks form within the community of people who have similar coloring styles or people who are on a similar coloring journey or an art journey. We have a lot of people who are illustrators who are not even colorists. And those people have clicked and are collaborating on things. It's just amazing. And it makes me so happy. It makes me so happy that I just gave you guys a space, a place, a little corner on of the internet, and you turned it into this Eden of of just happiness and and amazing amazing creative art so thank you guys so much for being awesome uh okay you go I'll take my charts and let her decide which one she wants okay the the charts for the for the black widow pencils I'm glad that you guys are doing that I myself I'm not a fan of color charts as those of you who know me well um already suspected I would say I I don't keep color charts for my pencils um, but I it, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't color charts work for a lot of people and many of you are um, are uh, fans of color charts and are very good of put, uh, at putting together color charts so please do continue and there are many people in the community who do professional color charts so that should actually be an interest in our community we should make one called um, color charts and then people can collaborate and uh, and work on those together I uh, love the page Huxley did for Mark oh my god yeah uh, Mark is organizing an event in uh, the little gnome that's right uh, in February it's his yearly tradition and it's called my very bloody Valentine I will be talking a lot more about this event as we approach February I'm of course going to be a part of it um, in fact Starting in February, I'll be running live streams showing you how to work with um, pastel pencils to color this page. This is the page that I did for my Very Bloody Valentine. It is already up on Etsy and it's a free gift for a whole bunch of my students and patrons. Uh, so check if you have that as a gift before you go buying it. I will admit this. Uh, to me, it, it almost it took almost a year to figure it out what Tom stood for. And no shame in that. No shame in that at all because I don't spell it out and it just turned out to be a really cool name that's, that's kind of abstract and most people don't actually know what it stands for. Uh, color charts keep me calm. I've heard that a lot from people. I've heard that a lot. And, and if that's the case, then absolutely keep keep making them keep keep doing them you know put them up in frames on your walls and and compare them with other people's color charts absolutely so um oh so my very bloody valentine is a yearly event 
that Mark hosts that's quite amazing and I'll keep you guys posted on all the artists that are participating and all the live streams that will happen in February for it and as the name suggests it's a little bit on the dark side um, but very heavy on the romantic side so you, you don't have to be a fan of Valentine's Day to join there's going to be a bunch of really cool art from a bunch of really cool artists and Mark has uh, two categories of artists participating in his events. He he has the old timers like like myself and 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 Monia Gates and and some other people that you know from YouTube. Uh, Lisa also added more blood for me to the picture. Yes, that's right. All that blood splatter is specifically for Mark. But he's also hosting this event for new and upcoming artists, people who are just now learning how to be coloring page artists who have just now discovered that they are going to make coloring pages possibly for a living possibly uh, for a hobby um, but new and upcoming amazing amazing artists um, and Linda Huxley one of our own right here in the chat is one of those people uh, Cindy Bain is another um, is another new upcoming color uh, color illustrator who's going to participate in the event both of um, both of those colorists are private students of mine and I am very, very proud of their progress and their coloring pages are just amazing. Uh, Tara says, I will try to participate in the next event. No time for it right now. Well, um, the next event, the My Bloody Valentine event, will run the entire month of February. And oh, we have 20 artists participating this year, says Mark. I didn't even know that. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. So that event, um, I heard my name. That's right. <laughs> we, I was bragging about you as my very talented students. I want a zombie Papa Smurf. That's really cute. That's really cute. Um, my Bloody Valentine will run the entire month of February. And the only thing that you have to do... Uh, to participate in the event is color one of the pictures by any of the participating artists. There will be a lot of pages on Etsy. There will be a lot of gift pages as well. Um, you just need to color one page over the entire month of February and submit it to Mark's folder for the participating um, colorist. But there will be so many prizes. The biggest prize of Mark's February event will be two boxes of Black Widow pencils that Albert Jones is donating personally. Oh, we made her blush. You are an incredible artist and your drawings are just fantastic. Uh, we, we were only talking about the, the little gnome. Uh, he's really cute, but uh, I've seen Huxley's page that she's actually submitting to my Bloody Valentine event and it will, it will blow your guys' minds. It's, it's really beautiful. Oh, we have a new channel member. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for joining. You are a baby shark. Somebody has to sing the baby shark song. <laughs> Selena's mind is blown. <laughs> Thank you guys for the... For the for, oh, I can't speak now. I was so happy about my new member. Thank you for becoming channel members and for the super chats. It's, it's really helpful to me. Oh, there's a whole list of artists this year. Thank you for sharing that, Mark. That's the list of everyone who's be, who will be participating in my very bloody Valentine. Oh, there it is. There it is. Baby Shark. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Baby Shark. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, la, la, la. Oh, uh, little ladybug. Uh, a baby shark is the pain of my existence, says Lily Rose. <laughs> we looked up baby shark on YouTube, the little video with the little song. And it's like, I don't know if it's the number one performing video on YouTube, but it's somewhere up there. It's quite terrifying. It has millions upon millions of views. Baby shark. Can you believe that? Oh my god. <laughs> I see my uh, my channel members throwing gang signs. <laughs> Very cool with our with our private little stickers. Awesome. I used to work with kids and I had to sing it daily. Oh no, Baby Shark is really catchy. I I we call it an earworm and um, 
I like I like to in, infect Tex ears with baby shark. So every chance I get, I, I throw in baby shark, and he's like, ah, it's stuck in my head again, <laughs> baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> in our house the song that we sing to drive each other crazy is the duck song i don't think i know the duck song um remember the hamster dance oh my god i have a baby monkey version too oh we have more people singing baby shark all right we are finally on our second color our second color is from the dragon set it is DG158 and it's called Shiraz. It's a beautiful burgundy color. Um, again, you don't have to use all the same colors that I'm using. Uh, whatever set you're working with, whatever colors you're working with. Um, if you already did a layer of pink, uh, pick a burgundy. But the, the trick here is that we don't want it to be quite red yet. So you really want to pick something that's kind of between a deep red and a violet. Um, so like a really dark pink really is what we're looking for, uh, for, for that deeper part of the rose. Uh, I'm going to avoid um, black here or any, any kind of a really dark color. Um, because we want this rose to be super delicate and very silky. And of course, the level of intensity of the color is in is entirely up to you guys. You can make this a lot more pale than what I'm doing. I'm making a very vibrant tea rose, as bright as I can possibly get. Um, but you don't have to. You can make this very pale. And the way to make it pale um, is pick colors that are lighter than the colors that I'm picking and use a lot less pressure, a lot less pigment. So for the pink, for instance, my my arm is getting is getting in my way. <laughs> I'm so tired of this thing. Um, and so for the pink, for instance, if you want to go um, with a more dainty kind of a rose, a very pale rose, pick a pink that's a pale pink. It can even be from the skin tones. Um, those of you who have the Black Widow skin tone sets, you can make some really beautiful tea rose effects uh, with, um, with the pinks and the blush tones and the skin tones uh, from the skin tone sets. Ah, the purple dinosaur. <laughs> Lisa, use a pillow. I am. I am using a pillow. I have a pillow right here. Um, the the problem is I'm also leaning on it, so I'm like leaning on my broken arm. It just it just doesn't work. Uh, what area of Tom should I post the Black Widow swatch? Uh, anywhere. Just post it in the main thread, and uh, and that's it. It doesn't have to be um, put into an album. Just anywhere. Hello everyone. Hello, sick girl. Welcome. We are on color two right now. We did, we we're working on tan paper and we did, there's going to be a recap for every new person who joins, <laughs> which uh, thank you so much, 45 people who are watching and thank you for those thumbs up. You know, they help the internet go smooth. Uh, so we started on tan tone paper with white charcoal. Our first color was watermelon from one of the original uh, Black Widow sets, and that's BW57. Our current color is Shiraz from the... I don't know why I have to say it that way. I'm like, Shiraz. <laughs> I, just, I can't say it regular. Um, from the dragon set, and that's DG158. It's just, it's such a sophisticated color, I think. It's, it's, it's very... It's it's refined, you know. If you name your your color pencil after after a red wine, it's it's kind of it's fancy. Uh, so thank you, thank you, all the new people who are coming in. So with this Shiraz, uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of that burgundy tone. I'm not co covering everything that's pink with the Shiraz, um, but I'm adding that deeper. Um, deeper burgundy tone to the deeper parts of the rose and as you can see on the final picture um, it does get quite um, quite dark in the in the parts of the rose that are that are closer to the center and also ultimately I will add a little bit of darkness to some of the tips of the petals um, but for now we're just working with this and we had uh, we had a poll in the beginning of the show uh, it's a sexy name for a sexy color indeed Oh, Donna Malone joined the wolf pack. Thank you, Donna. Welcome to the pack. Let's, let's give Donna a howl. Oh, welcome to the pack. 
the pack is an awesome place to be. Um, the pack uh, is the top three tiers of my of my Patreon. So the Feather Wolves, uh, Dragon Foxes, and Doodle Bugs collectively make up the pack, and there's a whole secret circle for the pack and for the, for the pack in Talm of where pack members collaborate, and um, and they have their own private lessons. So actually, uh, Donna and everyone else who is a pack member in February, the private lesson will be on how to color a black rose by popular demand from, from the pack. So thank you so much and welcome, new feather wolf. Always, always exciting to have you. Um, I will, oh, Selena says I missed the pack. We miss you too, ladybug. I know you'll be back. You are, you are our wolf who comes and goes, but you're always welcome back. That's the cool thing about Patreon. You guys don't need to feel like you are stuck with it. It's not, um, you don't owe me anything. You know, if you can join for a month, that's fantastic. And that's, that's more than helpful to me and more than helpful to you because I, I do treat my patrons very generously with, um, with rewards and entertainment. So even if you can only join for a month or two, or if you come and go every other month, it's perfectly fine. You don't have to feel like you are bound to me forever because you swore patronship. Uh, so uh, with the pack, we'll be doing a black rose. Uh, when I was deciding on what color to make this rose, I saw that a lot of people asked for a black rose. Oh, I posted in Wham. Okay, that's great. Wham is an excellent chapter for posting stuff like that. Wham is a chapter of the community where all the gloves are off, <laughs> where people can, best pack mama, thank you, um, where people are open to constructive criticism. And like we talked about before uh, on the show, there's never conflict in Talm. And it's not because people avoid it. It's not because people avoid um, communicating. It's because people are just really civilized and respectful. And if somebody disagrees with something, there's no need to argue about it. We can just discuss it as creative people and as grown-ups, mostly grown-ups. Wow, Indigo, you've been a member for five months. Congratulations. Wow, I had no idea. You are a baby shark who is not such a baby anymore. I <laughs> Selena's dying. <laughs> Baby Shark. Okay, we got we got to get the song going again. Baby Shark. <laughs> I always wanted to do a galaxy rose. A galaxy rose? What's a galaxy rose? That sounds amazing. Like a rose that actually looks like a galaxy with stars and everything. We can do that in a pack. What do you guys think? So the black rose thing came about because I uh I threw up a poll, threw up. <laughs> okay, forget forget about all my comments about grown-ups. I <laughs> a five months old baby shark. Um I I threw up a <laughs> a poll in the community asking you guys what color to color this rose and um and you all voted on tea rose because the options that I gave you were tea rose, red rose, white rose, or I think yellow rose. Uh, and uh, everyone voted on tea. But a lot of uh, members posted in the comments below saying black, 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 black. And, and, and I was like, oh, stop it. Stop giving them ideas. And then I realized <laughs> that all the people who are asking for the black rose are actually my pack members. Um, they, <laughs> so I'm like, let's do a pack, uh, a pack meeting on how to color a black rose. So that will be a really fun one. It will run the entire month. It's going to be a pre-recorded two hour color along, but it will run an entire month so you guys can watch it at your own time it will have commentary um, but it will be a step-by-step -step coloring like this one just just of black and with a little bit more technical detail with a little bit more color theory in there than I do during these private these public live streams uh, just a rose with a galaxy on it it's a fantasy thing not a real one it sounds amazing um, it sounds like a really cool thing to make um, I kind of feel like I need to do it. I may change my black rose to a galaxy rose for the for the pack meeting. I will I will ask the wolves and the dragon foxes and the doodle bugs. Mark is also a member for five months. Oh my god, you guys are all hitting your milestones today. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm dying to see how you color a jam with one color. I will watch later. 
Yes, that is a fun, fun, fun video. Um, if somebody could give me a link for that, I'll put it up on the screen as well for those people who will be watching the rerun of the show later. Um, it's one of my latest videos that I posted on YouTube and it's literally called how to color a gemstone with only one pencil. And it's true. I color it with only one colored pencil and it looks like a realistic gemstone. Uh, I've had some colorings of that already shared in Tom and they're absolutely amazing. Thiago posted his... Uh, emerald that he did based on my teaching. I did uh, a ruby in the video, um, but I explained how you can use a different color following my technique and he made an emerald and it looks 100% real. It's incredible. I'm liking the texture of the rose. Thank you. Um, the texture is quite important here. Um, part of the reason why I had to use six colors, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to do it with one pencil. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a a bit of a gimmick, a bit, a bit of a trick, and a bit of a let me let me blow your minds with the kinds of things you can do with um, with colored pencils. You certainly don't need to limit yourself to just one. Using more colors is always great. I watched it. Thank you. Uh, the texture makes it look so real. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm going for. I am going for um, that that rose texture. That's a little bit there. It's if you feel a rose petal, it's a little bit ribbed, um, very, very little. And uh, you can see the, the silk lines on the rose petals when you look at a rose. And with tea roses, it's especially obvious because the colors bleed into each other, that, that pink and that, and that yellow, they, they bleed into each other. And, uh, and you can see the, the veins of the petals uh, quite a bit. Uh, so I'm intentionally creating this uh, this texture effect with the direction of my pencil strokes so that it looks more realistic. Lisa, you're a great art coach because you show the progress of the art project step by step. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. My, my bow doesn't work anymore with my broken paw, but <laughs> you guys get the idea. That, that, that's the best you're going to get. <laughs> Uh, I'm still here lurking because I'm eating. Nom, nom, nom. Well, thank you for sticking around. And thank, oh my God, we have 50 people watching now. Thank you guys and welcome if you're just coming in. Uh, Margie says, I worked for a flower shop and, oh wow, and had to dethorn roses. Very accurate. That's amazing. How do you dethorn roses? Do you have like little cat nail clipper thingies? I can't even imagine. Wow, what a cool job. Uh, looks like a rose laying on top of the paper if the paper looks so alive. Thank you, guys. You you, you like my coloring. I like that. <laughs> oh, and here's that link to Patreon again. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, let's see. Our next color. Color three now. Color three. Let's see if anyone wants to change their vote. It will be fun to work in a flower shop. Yeah, for sure. This is a, a color called Gold Dust. This is also from the Dragon Set. The Dragon Set is the latest set and I'm still really into it. It's one of my favorite sets. Um, even though it doesn't have all of my favorite colors and I'm constantly complaining about how much green it has, but it's still a brand new toy and I'm still really excited about it. And all the reds and oranges and yellows in it are just amazing. This gold dust, it's just such a cool color. I mean, the name aside, the color itself is just perfect for the tea rose. And this is this. Oh, you miss my fox hat. Well, I live in a desert now, so I don't really need a hat. But I do have fox ears. Do you guys want to see them? I can put them on for you if you want. Um, so this golden yellow is is the thing that will make the tea rose effect. Pick a yellow that's that's heavier, that's like a yellow egg yolk. Um, you know, we want like a heavier on the orange side um, yellow other than rather than a lemon yellow. Uh, so that's what we're going for. And here I'm using it to blend. I'm going over the pink. Uh, here's the color pencil link. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going over the pink and over the white, almost all the way to the edge. I'm actually going to cover, yes, for fox ears. Okay, I'll be right back. Hold on.
I, I think Foxy Ears deserves a super chat. Okay, here here they come. It's kind of hard to do with one with one functional hand. Here you go. Ah, oh, there you go. Is that is that straight? Does that work? Which way? It's kind of hard. Okay, there you go. Fox ears. Not very straight at all. Okay, this is surprisingly more difficult than I expected it to be. <laughs> I love that your response is just laughter. Okay, I am the, the world's most crookedest fox. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> okay, life with one arm is hard. The things that I miss doing are just ridiculous. Um, for instance, I miss being able to blow my nose in the tissue the way that I used to. <laughs> There's no way I can put these on straight. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run out to the to the to the mirror and, and fix them and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. You know why? I had them on backwards. <laughs> what does the fox say? Oh my god, you know that song. That song is so cool. We just discovered it on YouTube the other day. What does the fox say? It's such a cool music video and it's so catchy. We we watched it. I love that song. I can't believe you guys know it. Oh, it's so cool. Um, don't worry, I got a good picture of you already. Oh no. Mark is taking screenshots. <laughs> I'm I'm a three-legged fox. That's what I am. <laughs> My last name is Fox. Cool. <laughs> I have always been associated with foxes because my name, Lisa, in Russian sounds very much like the word for fox in Russian. And, and I'm actually Russian, for those of you who don't know. So my, my dad used to call me baby fox. Like baby shark. <laughs> baby fox. Actually, he still calls me baby fox. That's, that's like his pet name for me. Sad fox. Yeah. Sad that three-legged fox <laughs> with a broken paw. I love that. You guys know about the What Does the Fox Say song. I can't believe that. That's so cool. Um, it's super catchy. You know, speaking. Where's Shelby? She is. She's behind me, but she's in a different bed now. There she is. Can, can you see that? <laughs> Yeah, she's she's still there. Just she decided not to, not to sleep in her beanbag today. Sometimes she doesn't want to be part of the show. Uh, Lily Pots by my mom. I don't know that. Oh, it happened again. I needed to refresh. I'm sorry. Um, YouTube has not been very, very, um, very cooperative lately. Fifty three people in the in the stream. Thank you guys. It's the fox ears, isn't it? <laughs> It's a very old song already. Oh my god. Uh, we oh my god. Ask Siri what does the fox say? I, I don't have Siri on my on my watch. I, I disable it every chance that I like. Uh, that that I get. Plus, if we play it on the show, I'm gonna get a copyright strike, so we can't do it. Uh, but somebody should post it in the community so we can all listen to it after the show. Uh, I want to know why Grandma Shark is the only one with no teeth. <laughs> the beanbag that was supposed to be for... Yes, that beanbag was supposed to be... Uh, it was actually supposed to be for Tech. Um, because Tech sometimes walks into my room and likes to share stories with me about how his day is going or whatnot. Um, so when he comes in, he just kind of ends up standing there with his, with his arms crossed. So I got a beanbag so that when he comes in, there isn't really room for an armchair here. In my other studio, I had an armchair. Um, but I've already cluttered this uh, <laughs> this uh, this room with stuff. Uh, so uh, 
I thought of getting a beanbag so that when tech comes in, he can he can park himself on the beanbag. Well, it didn't take a, an entire day for Shelby to claim the beanbag. Oh, somebody posted the, what does the fox say? <laughs> Uh, grandpa shark has no teeth either somebody said so all the grand sharks have no teeth yeah anyone with kids will never get that song out of their heads uh, we don't have kids and we still can't get that song out of our heads okay <laughs> we were talking about this yellow the kind of yellow to pick uh, pick the richest darkest yellow that you have but not dark in the sense of it's going on the brown side or the ochre side it needs to be clean and pure kind of like the smiley face uh, emoji uh, but not on the lemon side of the yellow more on like the egg yolk yellow of uh, of yellow so this gold rush um, is that what it's called gold rush gold dust sorry this gold dust color is perfect but it doesn't have to be limited to that it can be any other um, really bright yellow color and in the Black Widow sets there are so many beautiful yellows and in the uh, Prisma color set as well there's a huge range of beautiful yellows grape this is a really fun touch this is a little bit scary grape is a deep purple uh, <laughs> people are still laughing about the song Grape is a deep, deep purple color, and I'm adding it very cautiously here. It's easy to overwork roses, and I see a lot of people starting a rose coloring beautifully, and then they just add too much darkness to it, and it kind of kills the whole effect, and I'm guilty of it as well. I've overworked so many roses where they started out nice and then I just keep adding those shadows and I keep adding those shadows and it no longer looks like a flower but looks like a cabbage and roses look remarkably like cabbages if, if you think about it um, so don't don't make your roses look like cabbages try to keep it um, nice and soft and smooth and killing those outlines is one of the ways to to assure that smoothness but also not adding too many dark colors is another way unless you're working on a dark rose of course if it's a if it's a deep purple rose or a red rose then obviously the the game changes uh there's an egg yolk color in the black wood there is oh my god <laughs> I am such a diehard Black Widow fan, and I didn't even know that. Cabbage Rose, <laughs> right? That should be a, that should be a thing. Cabbage Rose. Um, what what you say? Something is done too dark. <laughs> Point well taken. Point well taken. <laughs> gold dust. Yes, this color is gold dust. I did not know that there was a color called egg yolk in the Black Widow set, but I am not surprised. I there are you know believe it or not, as much as big of a Black Widow fan as I am, there are so many colors that I haven't even tried yet. Like never even put pencil to paper. It's astounding. I I should go through my boxes and not everything is in their boxes anymore because I kind of just dump everything out and uh and then it never goes back and it's designated place and that's how i ended up with just piles and piles of uh, of pencils in a crate oh my god my hair <laughs> black widow 28 black widow 28 that's the that's the egg yolk that's from the first set okay i will check that out that that may be an excellent color for this if if it in if in fact it speaks true to its name if it lives up to its name and it is like like egg yolk um, I have a Morgan coloring page with a rose in it. I'm going to make it a tea rose. Oh, I want to see that. That would be very cool. But my main trick for tea roses is starting with... That's what I have to say to you, Iselina. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> Cabbage rose. <laughs> my main trick for tea roses is is to start with pink and then blend with yellow and having that tan undercolor that tan undertone um, the tan of the paper is a huge help um, whoever asked me about the color of the paper earlier in the show um, I, I hope this is starting to come together and 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 make more sense in practice over my explanation um, you can see how the tone of the paper is is kind of bringing out that tea feel 
Um, what is a tea rose? Uh, a tea rose is a tea is a rose that you dip in your tea in the evening. <laughs> a tea rose is a rose that is both pink and yellow at the same time is the best explanation that I've been able to come up with so far. Um, the color that we're using right now is actually red. Um, this is deep red from the CB54. That would be Cobra, right? The Cobra set. Um, deep red, a ladybug would be another excellent color. My ladybug is this short at this point. Apparently, it's my favorite red pencil. Uh, but uh, this deep red is great as well. We're going for a clean classic red, like a lipstick red. I often call it a tattoo red, like an old school tattoo color. Um, that kind of a red, no more burgundy, no more pink. We want a nice clean red that's not too dark. And this step is actually optional. All the steps that are coming up starting from this point are kind of optional. Oh, here's the link to the to the color theory course. So for those of you who want to join that, that's on demand now. So you can start the lessons whenever. You don't have to wait for uh, for anyone's schedule. Uh, ladybug. <laughs> uh, so every single color that I'm adding from this point on is technically optional. Uh, we talked about how many colors you need to use for coloring, which is why we had the poll in the beginning. And uh, you can't you can't add too many. Um, you can add too, li too few, but theoretically you can add 20 or 30 colors there. It's just that when you get past 12, you don't really see the difference anymore. It's really all the same. I tried going past 16 on one of my steampunk uh, colorings and it, like past 16, nothing was happening at all because there's just so many layers already. I'm not actually adding any value to the coloring. So I like to stay between six and 12 colors. That's why that's why those were the options in the poll, six, eight, 11, or 12, because that's generally the number of pencils that I use for any given coloring, un unless it's really elaborate or unless I'm testing a pencil box and I'm trying to use as many colors as possible. But six to 12 is a good number of pencils to use on something like this. Why am I using red now? Um, personal, personal decision doesn't have to be there. Um, if you're going for a more delicate rose, like we talked about earlier on the show, if your rose is a little bit more on the pale side, if you want it to be more uh, pink. Bye, Christina. Bye. Thank you for joining. I hope you watch the rest of the show when you have more time. Um, if you're going for a more delicate, more pale rose, you probably don't want... Thank you, Nightbot. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're going for a delicate rose, you don't want to add red at this point. You want to stick with the pinks. And in fact, if you were going for a really, really delicate and pale rose, you probably don't even want to go anywhere past this point at all. You're probably already done. It already looks like a beautiful rose. But I'm going to take mine a little bit further um, so that ultimately it comes out looking like this because I am I'm very heavy on high contrast with my art um, it's a personal personal style and um, you guys all have your own personal coloring styles as well some of you are very pale colorists um, some of you are very delicate colorists some of you are very extreme colorists and like to really really um, push your boundaries and try out crazy extreme colors and, and prefer thicker outlines. Some people don't like outlines at all. So try things out, get a feel for it. This rose is also quite big. I intentionally made it, and so on the page, it's, it's a pretty large, a very sizable rose. Um, but on a lot of coloring pages, roses are decorations. They're just little things around the frame or a character may be holding a rose or maybe they have a rose in their hair. Um, in that case, the rose is much smaller and you're not going to need to spend two hours coloring it. It's going to be a much faster effect. But you can still apply the same exact principle as what I'm teaching in, in this live stream. Start with your white charcoal, but if the rose is tiny, your little swashes of white going from the edge of the petal inwards are going to be... Uh, they are actually called cabbage roses? Are you kidding me? I thought I just made that up. Wow, they're cabbage roses. That's insane. 
Well, they look exactly like cabbages. If you try to color a green rose, it's totally going to look like a cabbage. I can't see outlines anymore. Yeah, that's really cool. That's exactly the effect that I was going for. And that's why we added the purple. We added the purple not because we needed it to be that much darker, but because um, we have the edges of the petals really light, in some cases pure white. So to make that stand out and to com continue to hide the outline, I went up against that outline from the other side with a dark purple. So between that white and purple connection, the line disappears entirely. So now we can use more of a lemon color yellow. This is called mellow yellow for the from the dragon set. Very common color. This color exists pretty much in every single set or a variation of this color exists in every single set. And it's a light yellow, lemon yellow. Even chartreuse would work here, but I would be careful with chartreuse because it often looks a little bit, um, a little bit like neon. We don't want to go full neon here. We want it to just be a little bit more vibrant. Why am I adding this yellow? Because I want to push this rose as far as possible um, to be colorful, to be really colorful. And that's for demonstration purposes. If I was to color this just for fun, I would probably keep it a little bit more monochromatic, a little bit more subdued. But I want to demonstrate the very extreme of where you can go with a tea rose. Uh, so I'm going to throw as many colors at this thing as possible just so that you guys get a feel for it, for the kinds of options that you have here. I love that color as well. It's quite beautiful. There's a blue rose. It's called Blue Girl Hybrid Tea Rose Plant. That's quite a mouthful. We're going to have to look that up because I... The, the blue rose is like my white whale. Uh, can you talk about the gray paper? Yes, absolutely. Actually, the paper that I'm... Let me just announce this color first. This is chalk tone. It's a very dark brown. Be very careful with this. Again, you may not even want to do this step. I'm only adding it to increase my contrast and also to add a little bit of that brown because roses, they, they get very easily bruised and they often have actual brown um, on them. I thought it was tan paper. It, it Correct. It is actually tan paper. It's not gray. Um, it's confusing because on camera, on this camera, when I put this up to the screen, the paper looks gray and that's because that light is a pure white light. Um, but if you see them next to each other, this is gray and this is tan. So you can see the difference now, I hope. Um, tan, gray. Uh, but on the screen, you get a cleaner version of that color. Uh, on the, the way that it looks on the screen is is how it looks like in real life. That 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 camera is um, is too bright. The light is too bright and too too much on the cool side, so you can't see the actual color of the paper. Uh, so yes, I am indeed coloring this on uh, tan paper. And the reason that I chose tan and not gray is because the tea rose is very warm, is very cozy, very peachy. So I'm going with a softer warmer color of the paper rather than gray. It can be done on gray, but it doesn't, it's better on tan. <laughs> it, it, it depends on the mood you're going for. My color theory students know all about mood at this point. Uh, how many colors have I used so far? That is a legitimate question. We are on brown. This is color number seven. So we've already passed the uh, the six color mark. So those of you who voted on six, I'm sorry, you lost. But you were close. You were very close. Iselina is leaving. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so this is color number seven. And this is color number eight. This color is actually the only reason that I would use gray paper. This is Blue Tongue from the Black Widow Dragon set. It's a beautiful color for shadows. If you guys are working with skin tones, this is the perfect color for skin tone coloring for shadows um, around the eyes, on the cheekbone, under the under the chin. Um, incredible, incredible color. In fact, it should be in the skin tone sets. There is a great lavender in the skin tone sets and it's, it's a beautiful color as well. But I think this one is even better. I like to, to add lilac to all of my shadows regardless of what I'm working on, whether it's faces or cabbages or roses. It all gets blue shadows uh, if I have a say in it. 
So that's always a nice touch. I also talked a lot about bluish shadows in my lesson on white roses and how to make those outlines disappear. Um, so do check that out if you haven't already. Uh, in this case, I'm adding it kind of all over to the petals that are further out, nothing to the center. So notice I have a lot more yellow in the center and a lot more pink and, and now with a touch of blue in the periphery. And now I'm going to add Prismacolor White highlights. So that was the final, would it work for an undead skin tone? It would, it would work beautifully for an undead skin tone, but not on its own. I would enhance it with something dark and sinister, like an 80% French gray or something like that. Um, especially for that death around the eyes. Yeah, it would be good, but not, not on its own. Uh, this is Prismacolor White. I use it for my final highlights. It's, it's an option. Uh, it's an optional choice. Again, you don't need to do this. And uh, it's the only thing that's going to work here. White, uh, white Black Widows are not going to work here. They're, they're just not going to make a difference. Uh, white Charcoal is not going to work here anymore. White Charcoal only works underneath colored pencils, not over them. Uh, so if you colored too much over your white charcoal or you feel like you need a little bit more of white uh, highlights, uh, yes, correct, eight colors so far. Um, or if some parts need to be made a little bit lighter, for instance, some of the yellow parts, I want them to be a little bit lighter. I can go over them with a, with a white Prisma color pencil. That's like my ultimate final magic trick for any coloring. If anything needs to be made lighter, if I need to add some extra highlights here and there, that's a white Prisma color pencil. So that's an excellent, excellent thing to do. Or if you need to add some shine or, um, you know, add a little bit more texture with the, with the white Prismacolor lines, now is the time to do it. It's, a, it's one of my favorite effects. And there are very few pencils that can do this Prismacolor white. So far, no matter how much I test different whites, it's by far the best one for this effect. Uh, very very cool color and you can see that I'm lightening a lot of my yellow areas a light of my pink a lot of my pink areas so that's also an excellent fallback plan in case you overwork this rose if you made it too dark if you made it oh Mona you actually have a rose as your as your little avatar picture that's so cool <laughs> Uh, if you overwork the rose, if you made it too dark or just too intense, too much contrast, you can tone it down now with this white Prisma color. It's, it's a very versatile thing. And the best thing about it is you don't have to have the entire Prisma color set to own a Prisma color white. They actually sell them in a pack of 12. Um, and they may even sell them as individual pencils. I, I have the pack of 12 because I, I go through them like crazy. Um, they're quite affordable and they last forever. Like I use these pencils a lot and they're really long lasting pencils. So that's it. That was my final touch on it. And those of you who voted eight were correct. Congratulations. Yay! I buy Prismacolor white a dozen at a time. Like, love that white pencil. Yeah, same here. Someone sent me a, a 12 pack of them a while ago and I've been buying 12 packs ever since. Um, I'm totally hooked on them. I have a separate drawer on my desk for Prismacolor White because they're just amazing, um, amazing white pencils. I had the Prismacolor White in my 150 Prismacolor pencil set and I just ate through it in like a week. Um, craft stores sell them by themselves. That's, that's really good to know as well. It's just such a great tool to have in your studio. If you don't have one already, um, go check it out. What colors or what color or colors would you do for the background? I don't do backgrounds. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yay, I voted eight. But if you were to do a background, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's actually like a little Victorian pattern behind the rose that's done in um, in lilac. So you can follow that pattern and trace it with with something. If I were to do a background, I would do it in purple. So I would go over the Victorian pattern that I have behind the rose in deep purple and maybe like a lighter lilac around it or like a light blue around it. If you want to really bring out the color of this rose, hey, a question for my color theory course students. How would you make this rose pop on the screen? What color would you use for the background? I'm gonna let that one run. Don't explain it though. Just, just, just say it. 
Uh, the dozen white on Amazon are pretty inexpensive and they're at your door in two days. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. You can just get them like next day delivery and, and I have Amazon Prime so I can have them at my door tomorrow if I need them. It's, it's really cool. Uh, Michaels sells white Prisma pencils. That's good to know. I, I have a Michaels near my house. I voted eight. Very nice. Actually, most of you voted eight. Eight was almost 50% of the voters voted for eight. Uh, so congratulations, you guys. You are really good. Green. People are saying green for the background would make this pop. Absolutely. Uh, purple or dark blue would also work great. I would stay away from red, pink, orange and yellow for the background because it would make it look um it would just kind of blend make it look a little bit uh, a little bit flat i would go with blue or purple but that that's me i like i like blue and purple a lot green would certainly make sense because it's a rose it probably has like a garden background so a lot of people are saying green a blue green yes a blue green like a turquoise would be great um what brand of white chalk do you use i use did i put that up on the on the screen uh i use general's brand white charcoal and uh, in the video description there's a link called art supplies that i use in the studio if you click on that it actually has uh yeah that's the stuff generals it actually has all the things that i recommend on amazon in that link so if you follow that the the white charcoals i review them on amazon as an influencer uh general's brand white charcoal it's we call it crack in the community like if you hear people saying crack that's what we're talking about because i am totally properly addicted to this stuff all right guys i see that you're all still here even though the coloring is over i still have 45 people watching uh i'm gonna take any last questions on this for the next two minutes and then i'm gonna say goodbye because i have to go get an x-ray uh, yes these <laughs> the, the crack exactly <laughs> the the joke there is that we call white charcoal crack so it's cracked and it looks like a weight pencil. So that's uh, that's what that uh, symbol actually means. It's my it's my uh, it's my crack. <laughs> I was wondering what the crack was all about. Yes, we don't actually promote drug use on this channel. We're not talking about actual crack. <laughs> Fantastic artwork. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone who uh, supported me with a super chat during this stream. Thank you those of you who joined the channel as a channel member. Um, welcome Donna, my new feather wolf. Welcome to the pack. Uh, good luck with x-ray. Thank you. Um, thank you very, very much. It was always fun to watch. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for being fantastic. I'm off to get an x-ray. I will see you guys in February when we will color this. My bloody Valentine thing. Uh, we will actually color it in two parts. So in part one, we will do only the skin tones. So I will see you then. And in the meantime, I will see you guys in... Tom, my free private community. So thanks again. Color those roses. Share your work. I love you guys. Bye. Everyone's favorite part. Lisa figures out how to end her stream. Bye. No?